And let me see here. How do I put my, oh, there it is. Okay. So I'll switch it around here. So we're talking about probates, how to dominate your local market. I'm telling you, I literally wrote the book on this because I found out probates were like really good deals by accident. I would do some and then I made a bunch of money and I couldn't figure out how I did it. And then I basically had an accountant tell me you need to do more deals just like this. So I went on a journey. I learned everything I could about probate and I share guys. You can Google me to death on YouTube. I share everything I can on probates and I want to share it with you. Now, here's the secret to probates, guys. It's not just super fast. You're going to get 15 deals right out the gate. It is a long-term play, but I promise you, if you stick it out, amazing things will happen in your life. And the really cool thing I like about probates is they're super cheap. They don't take a lot of time. And if you're a decent human being and you like helping people, it's great. If you want to be one of these sharky investors and run people over, please don't do probates because I don't want you hurting people. So let's get into it. So I'm going to share with you first, I'm going to show you the six reasons why I love probates. And then I'm going to share a little sneaky trick that I use to really, really hit probates out of the park. And here's the really cool. You're all going to love this. It's free. I teach it for free. And the technique I'm going to show you, you don't have to pay thousands of dollars. It's just a quick little trick. It works and it will get you some traction. You decide what to do with it. So remember when you do prior uh, probates, the house is not the priority. So if anybody has ever had to deal with the unfortunate event of somebody passing away in your family, it sucks. There's no other word. I just went through this. It's painful and it hurts. Okay. So you got to put yourself in these people's shoes and you got to have a heart. If you have a heart, let's move forward. Everybody I deal in probate, when I first get introduced to them, do not attack them on price because it's the quickest way they're either going to hang up or shut the door on you. Okay. Put yourself in their shoes. You sound terrible. If you're attacking, I always try to help. And this is the reason why I've done so good in probates because I learned God gave me two ears and he gave me one mouth. And if I can just follow the clues that God gave me, I will do very well. And I've learned to do much less talking in probates and a lot of listening. So the hardest part of probates is that first 30 seconds to one minute of meeting the person. It's hard because they're in their most vulnerable position in their life. And you got to be that person that's not there to tear them apart. You're actually there to help them. And you have to come from a helping hand. So if everybody agrees to do that, I'm telling you, if you just take that tip alone, you'll do very, very good in probates. Okay. So remember, the house is not the priority. It's the family is. And if you go in with that attitude, it works very well. So many people just try to attack what the price is and it drives me nuts. Okay. They're looking for two things, convenience and they want dignity. Okay. They don't want to hear like how rough mom's house is. You got to be kidding me. Like I'm just getting over my mom. All her stuff's in there. I can't even walk into it. Um, I'm dealing with this right now. And I'm here to tell you, I've bought over a hundred houses in this situation where they could not even walk inside the house because it hurts. So remember, a house is just a physical place. It's the home that counts. And when you understand it's a home and you treat it like that, you can help them out. You can be empathetic and you can find a path that walks them through it. So they want convenience because they, they don't want to be haggled with. And they want their dignity. And I'm telling you, I've done thousands of transactions with probates. This never rings stronger than that. Okay. Number two, most probates have deferred maintenance. This just means the maintenance is behind. Why? Because when somebody is elderly or somebody's sick in a family, the priority is always to take care of the loved one. That's how it should be. So if you go in and attack the real estate on like, Oh, this is terrible. You've let it go to crap. I, why would you keep it like this? You're out. I'm coming in behind you. I'm going to help them. Now, not everybody operates this way in probates, but people that are passionate about their family and stuff, this is how most of them go down for me. The ones that are just sold on price, I'm usually not helping them out. They can go find a realtor and I'm not going to sit here and fight an uphill battle. So they have deferred maintenance means they need lots of work. Okay. 
They're usually way outdated. The kitchens are way outdated. Here's a little tip. Do not make fun of how the house looks. It hurts them and you're hurting them in their most vulnerable time. And this is not the one where you beat them down on the house. You console them. You talk about family pictures, how cool it is, and you give them comfort on that. Okay. This is just a human thing. This isn't like a wholesaling thing. I just need so many people like, how do you do so good in probates? I go, I just sit and listen to people. And if I got to take two hours to hear someone and I can help them feel better that day, I don't even care if I buy their house. If I buy their house, it's a bonus. And if you go from that position, you do very well. The houses that need maintenance, uh, you know, any type of fixing up, they are perfect for rehabbers and fix and flippers. Some of my favorite people to absolutely sell to. Okay, I promised I would move through this one quickly so I can help you guys. So number three, most probates are vacant. Okay, well, Rick, why is that important? I'm here to tell you in wholesaling, guys, if you have a vacant house, wholesaling is much, much easier. You can easily um, access the house. You can bring potential buyers to your contract there. You can bring um, contractors to figure out repair costs. The sky's the limit on a vacant house. That's why probates are really well. Now, you got to get permission to it. So here's another little tip. When the seller tells you, particularly when they're in another state, they go, listen, Rick, we're going to do a deal with you, but like, um, I don't have a key. And I made the mistake in my first two years of doing this is they said, listen, I'll mail you a key. You'll never get the key because it's just another thing they have to do. Their plate's full. They're dealing with lawyers. They're dealing with um, all the arrangements for the family. Make it simple. If you could just simply send me an email, I'll have a locksmith go over there. I'll cut a key. I'll put one in a lockbox and I'll send you a copy of it. Never, ever wait for them to ship you the key because you will never get it. I'm just telling you, I've done these so many times. Make it easy. Now, that's not a permission slip to break into the property, guys. You need to get written permission to give to the, the uh, locksmith. It costs 75 bucks, guys. It's well worth it because guess what? When you have the key, you basically have the inside track to the house. I've done this even before I got the contract if I have a really good connection with the seller, okay? Makes it easy to show. And then if I get a contract, it's easy to create some sort of multiple bidding wars because I can easily access the house and sell my contract by showing off the asset. Okay, number four, what do most probates need? Most probates need cash. They have deferred maintenance. The house is run down. They're not going to qualify for your typical mortgages that most of them, the FHA and the VA. And if they ever got an appraisal, the appraiser would not be happy with the condition of the roof, the, the air conditioning and everything else involved in it. Guys, these properties need love and the easiest way to get them through it is cash. And that's why it makes it completely perfect for the wholesaler. Probates are built for what we do. Most of the probates that I deal with when I actually connect with the seller, and by the way, you won't connect with every one of them. If they're completely perfect houses and they're ready to go, I've bought those two, but most of them wind up in the hands of a realtor and they should. God bless them. I hope they get a million bucks for the house, but I'm catering to the person that wants to get rid of the house. They do not want you to break them down and they really want convenience and you make it super convenient for them because they got a lot on their plate. Okay. Number five, okay, don't get mad with this saying, but I'm here to tell you, okay? This is just an expression, so don't take it personally, but this is the way I was taught it, okay? Hey, Rick, I really appreciate it. So um, I went through this with my mother, and it hurt. Ugh. Anyways, I'm not going to go there. A dead man's deed. All this means is... When somebody passes away and there's an existing mortgage on the property, it creates a great opportunity. And honestly, it's a great opportunity for the family. Let me explain this to you, okay? If there's an existing mortgage on the property, it's perfect for a subject to. I know you guys heard subject to. Subject to is a creative financing term where you take over someone's mortgage and just make the payments. Why they're so awesome in wholesaling is... They don't require bank's approval. You can close real quickly. And so say they had a $50,000 mortgage left on the house and they wanted like $65,000 for the house. And you go, man, that's a great deal. They go, okay, well, uh, you know, Rick, so you have the option. You can give them 15 grand or a lot of times I go, listen, I can give you 5,000 now. 
And then if you give me 90 days, I'll give you the other $10,000 and I'll take over the mortgage. The biggest objection you're ever going to get on a subject to is what? Think about it. How do I know you're going to pay it? And what's going to happen to my credit if you don't pay it? So if you have a person that's passed away and you take over the mortgage, there's no risk to the family. And guess what? They get paid faster. It's a smoother transaction. And honestly, if you're going to fix the house up, it doesn't mean you're going to fix it up. Maybe your new buyer that takes over your contract fixes it up is they're not going to not pay on the mortgage. Nine times out of 10, the mortgage gets cashed out within a year. But guys, I want you to think about this. You, you eliminate a lot of your risk by doing this. There's no risk to the estate because let's say, let's say the worst case scenario happens and you don't pay on the mortgage. What happens to the house? The bank forecloses it and they get it back. They do not have the right to chase down the estate. They, they didn't sign for the mortgage. There's, there's no risk to their credit. So they go, so, well, Rick, what if you don't make the payment? I go, then I'm going to lose a lot of money and I'm going to lose a lot of sleep and there's no effect to you. So I eliminate that risk by doing it. And honestly, you can easily sell these properties for terms if you want to fix them up, or maybe you can do someone that wants to do the fixing for you. They've had hard times. So maybe the property is worth 100000 normally in average condition on the market. Say you took it over 50000 you gave the seller fifteen in like a, a whatever, five, 15, whatever it is. And say you sold it for like 120000 on terms. Here's what I'm going to ask them for. I'm going to ask them for a big chunk of money up front. And I do these all day long. They're far and few between, but I'm telling you in probates, the ability to take over a subject to mortgage is very easy. Now, here's the trick to it. Like, well, Rick, I thought we were talking about wholesaling. We are. But every now and then, if always ask them, is there an existing mortgage on the property and is it up to date? And sometimes you get cash, sometimes you get terms. But sometimes in a probate, you can actually get both. You can get a great price and you can get terms. Simply ask. A lot of times I ask if they won't take my good cash price, are you open to a creative solution or work it in? Hey, if I took over that $50,000 mortgage, can I just cash you out the difference? Why is that important? You don't have to go get a hard money loan. You got built in soft money. And honestly, you can sell the property for even more. So guys, and if, if uh, Tim asks here, you know, um, you know, what if the taxes are delinquent? It's no big deal. I mean, taxes on the lower end houses are usually under four grand a year. So if you're in behind one year, you just run the numbers and you're going to work with the title company anyways, but you have the ability to go in your public records and look up the tax record. So it's an instant answer. And nine times out of 10, the family will tell you if they paid for the taxes or not. So you want to calculate in repairs, taxes and everything when you do it. But I'm, I'm here to tell you guys, the best subject to deals I've ever done all involve probate because I took over a dead man's deed. It's just a saying, don't take it personally. You guys know I've been through this personally. And number two, what's the objection? There's no objection. They don't care. Um, some people just on principle don't think it's right and you have to respect it. I will tell you this, whenever you do a subject to, you cannot force it. They have to volunteer for it. And how do you get them to volunteer? are you open to a creative solution to this? And that's all I used to say to him. I had no idea what I was doing, but I figured out as I went. So now the last one is <laughs> the six reasons I love probate. They're the absolute highest spreads. I get three to four times the average assignment I get on them. Um, we just did a probate. We did $86,000. It was a regular like wholesale deal. And then things just aligned up perfectly. We got the right price on it. They didn't want it anymore. And, uh, yeah, that was it. The key was it was a probate. So when I get probates. I get like really excited. No, not every probate works out, but I'm telling you guys, I love probates. Probates do not require a lot of energy. You're not going through thousands and thousands of leads. If you're working 50, 80 hours a week, you can do probates in your sleep. They're easy. So let me share with you a little technique I use so you can become an authority for probates in your local market. And I promise you this, it won't cost you a dime. I've used this. I've taken the video down because I had some issues. <laughs> I had some issues with competitors and stuff and I had to remove it. Um, so I was going to share that video with you, but I was advised I can't. So let me show you how to do it. Okay. I'm going to get through this real quick. You guys understand when you do a video, it sticks so much more than any type of text post you can do on the internet. 
Okay. So let me ask you this. Would you rather scroll through a video, somebody explaining something to you in like one or two minutes, or do you want to read this long form stuff? It drives me nuts. And it doesn't mean all video is good, but video dominates any type of search engines. So simply by using YouTube, and here's what you do. You don't have to know everything about probates, okay? But if you focus on the title on YouTube and just anywhere from a two to five minute video and just say, listen, um, you have to ask questions of what somebody going through probate would do. So the type of medium to do YouTube by far is the best. Facebook's okay. Instagram. I'm not a big Instagram guy. So, um, you guys can, you can adapt the information for whatever medium you want to do. So let me show you what I do exactly. Okay. Do me a favor. You can do it. Why, why you're on the live with me, go on YouTube and just type in, um, uh, so like if, if you were in, um, uh, I don't know, Phoenix, Arizona, just put um, Phoenix probate, uh, probate real estate and pop up. Predominantly what's going to pop up, occasionally your realtors will pop up, but they don't know much about probates and they're frightened with the timeline. Number two, you're going to see an attorney pop up. He's going to be in this ridiculous suit. I don't want to stereotype, but it's usually a big, just like a big husky guy in a suit and he talks way over your head and I have no idea what he's even saying. And he'll typically have about 10 views. And I'm talking about high-priced attorneys. I saw this. I go, you know what? That's ridiculous. So all I did was put in, um, so I'm in the Port St. Louis area, so everybody knows. You're not going to find the video because I took it down because I don't want you to do exactly what I did. You are going to put a title on there. I need you to ask quality questions. If somebody was looking to solve a probate, what's the first thing they would do? Okay. You got to think like a seller in probate. Number one, what's the biggest question? How do I find a probate attorney? That's a great title right there. How do I find a probate attorney in Port St. Lucie, Florida? Bang. Five minutes, you just being an authentic person and just help them. And at the end, if you're interested in selling your house, we, we love to buy probates. We're very familiar with the process. I can even give you a referral. Reach out and contact me. Phone number, email, whatever, whatever, whatever Insta click like goes on these days. Okay. Question number two, how much does a probate cost in Port St. Lucie? Dude, it is hammered. There's no videos in your market. I guarantee you. Okay, guys, you're not going to do a hundred probate deals in your first year. I'm just trying to get a couple across your bow. If I could show you an $86,000 profit of someone that you can honestly help and they will hug you at the closing, tell me you're all in because I'm telling you it goes down like that. So what you want to do is research you want to think like a seller and put the words in. So you know how we do Google searches? Do the same thing for YouTube. It actually works, okay? Uh, another one is, how do I sell my probate property in Phoenix, Arizona? And you start, you can have four or five titles. They're very quick videos. And guys, you just pick up your phone and shoot. Do not overthink it. You can always redo the video. Just get it out there. And then when you have someone that says, hey, listen, how do I know you're good at probates? Go, hey, listen, go check out my channel. I explain it to you. People just feel better when they connect with someone. And then that's why I tell everyone to kind of, uh, you, you want to work with title companies and a probate lawyer. So in the event you get someone that needs help, you can refer them. One of my greatest tricks is I get a lot of people that don't want to go through the probate process because they think it's brutally expensive. It's not terrible. And I walk them through it. And I actually have pre-negotiated prices with all my vendors, the lawyers, the title companies. Guys, I'm telling you, using this little trick, it's all about your quality questions. So think about how people would ask questions on it. And the key on YouTube is you got to put the title. Okay. Don't worry about a thumbnail. You don't need to worry about that. It's, you can just put a graphic on there and put, um, how much do probates cost in Phoenix? How much do probates cost in Salt Lake city? And I'm telling you, you don't need 10,000 views. You just need a few of the right ones. And if you look in your area, you're going to see a lot of attorneys trying to over explain people, help people out. Attorneys scare the heck out of me. They're annoying. I deal with them every week. And I, here's every attorney I tell, I go, dude, just give it to me in like layman's language. I don't understand what you're saying. It just sounds expensive. So, um, guys, that's it. I mean that I'm, I'm here to tell you, um, I love probates and if you're not doing them, it's fine. Full disclosure. I didn't do probates. 
um, the first nine years I was in wholesaling. And honestly, it's one of my biggest, I, I'm not saying it's a regret. I just, I didn't know. 